I wonder why the published version of the 1995 UN report, written by just one man, stated the exact opposite of the scientist's final draft, which had said five times that no human influence on global temperature was either discernible or immediately foreseeable. I don't know why you would say that the 1995 report was written by one man, as it most definitely wasn't. Every report lists the name of all the authors, the contributors and anyone else that was involved in the creation of the report. And it's quite a substantial listing, as demonstrated by the listed names for just one chapter. Now it could be that he simply misspoke, as his original argument on this was the following. And now watch this. Here is what the bureaucrats did. They rewrote the final draft yet again, after it had been cleared and signed off by the scientists, to say the exact opposite. The body of evidence now points to a discernible human influence on climate. And that has been the official line ever since. In both cases he says that the published report doesn't say what the scientists wrote in the final draft. This is simply not true. But there is a reason Martin mentioned this. I'll let Professor Stephen Schneider explain the genesis of this claim. So uh, then uh, over the years, uh, we all did our quiet work that nobody really paid any attention to. And uh, in 1994, uh, the IPCC, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, as all of you know, in its second assessment report, um, had in, cha in working group one a chapter eight, whose, uh, I think they called them convening lead authors then, was Ben Santer and Tom Wigley, right? I think it was both of you guys. No, just you, okay. That meant he was responsible for the chapter. And that chapter uh, was based on a paper that Ben led a team of people on looking for fingerprints, he'll explain that, uh, in the system. I gave you guys examples of them very quickly on the fly, but that's the guy who really did it first. And those fingerprints uh, basically pointed to a discernible impact of human activities on climate. This triggered a massively ugly scene at the, uh, it was the first massively ugly scene in the IPCC history at a plenary, which is where the hundred governments get together and have to approve the summary for policymakers word for word. And the guy being attacked was him. So it was because this chapter saying there was this discernible impact, though that word came out later in the, but you know, to that effect. And um, the chief Saudi negotiator, uh, basically said this was bad science, tried to drive a wedge between North and South countries, was very effectively doing it, and there was what is called a contact group. At a contact group, when you cannot agree in plenary, you go off and you negotiate. We negotiated like all day to get this language right. Now the Saudis who made all the fuss, and the Ku Kuwaitis never sent anybody, and they had many, many, many delegates. This one guy from Kenya came, and he had actually proposed dropping the entire chapter because he believed the Saudis. This was the southern solidarity. But this guy, meteorologist, not a famous science star, came and he watched this entire day, changed his mind, decided the process was fair and open. So we go back and the normal practice in IPCC after a contact group where the group agrees is that the text is put up there on the screen and it is pro forma accepted because if you started fighting over it again, you'd never get out. Well, of course, Saudis immediately raise their hand and Al Saban starts in. This is unacceptable to us. So Ben has the temerity, this mere scientist, to say, but sir, your delegation made the most noise and you did not even have anybody at the group. And Al Saban slams his fist in the table and it says, I am a representative of a sovereign country, you're just a scientist, you cannot talk to me like that. And we're a small delegation, we didn't have time. The Kenyan guy raises his flag. My stomach is in knots. And he gets up and he says, I'm a small delegation, I'm it. But I was convinced by the Saudis that this was really important. I went, I'm now satisfied, the lead authors are correct, I withdraw my objection and urge everybody to vote for it, it passed. Then the Wall Street Journal started accusing him, He'll, you can tell about that? Uh, no. no, of scientific cleansing. Because in an IPCC report, every single meeting, 
is correcting the language. So at the direction of the plenary, he corrected the language to which these guys in, I, in the Wall Street Journal redacted the components that were, that were one of your words you just taught me, Meg, that were uh, caveats and said, therefore, this was a, a distortion of that. So there's this Mr. Mild-mannered uh, Ben Santer, the statistician, quiet guy on the block, all of a sudden now out there as this object of uh, derision uh, by these manufactured, trumped-up charges of the, uh, of the ideology of no government control and, and the fossil fuel industry. Unfortunately for them, Ben very shortly thereafter got a MacArthur Genius Award, not just because he stood up to them, but primarily because this was the first scientific study really showing that there was a discernible impact of human activities on climate um, by good statistical testing. So to summarize what Professor Schneider said, the original report always said something to the effect that we are having discernible impact on the climate. And this conclusion, based on the research cited, caused some political controversy during a plenary session at the IPCC. All changes are discussed and approved during these sessions. And after such a session they agreed on this wording, which was then taken out of context by the media. No shenanigans involved, no strange rewriting of documents, it was just the media incorrectly reporting. Something that is quite easy to verify in public records, considering the other scientists involved spoke out that the media got this wrong.